Now on Science, we join our recruits halfway through the competition as they master self-defence and silent killing in Spy Master. Twelve recruits arrived at a secluded mansion set deep in the English countryside. A spy school, where they began a condensed version of espionage training based on the secret instruction of the world's leading spy agencies. The CIA, MI6, the KGB. They have one aim, to prove they have what it takes to be a secret agent. I've called enough of the situations that require you to be called. Um, I'd like to think I can be unnoticed and yet get the job done. I'm able to think very quickly on my feet, to think out of the box and take opportunities that other people might not see. I'll keep going regardless. I started on this to get through to the end and I intend to get through to the end. Putting them through their paces and monitoring their progress are a team of spy trainers, all professionals in the field. During stage one of training, the recruits learned espionage tradecraft. Now they're about to enter stage two. How to survive and operate behind enemy lines. Contact! Contact! Over the next two days, the recruits will learn the paramilitary skills taught to all secret agents sent into hostile territory. Self-defense. Weapons handling. Contact drills and close target reconnaissance. At the end of which, they will have to complete a mission behind enemy lines. And when it's all over, four of them will be removed from the course. learning how to survive and operate behind enemy lines. The first lesson of the day is self-defense. This is Krav Maga, first developed for Mossad, the Israeli intelligence agency. It's one of the most effective self-defense disciplines in the world, and it's being taught by world master Philippe Kadush. Just this, it is not enough. Have to do this, to move the head. Philippe teaches these same skills to intelligence agencies around the globe. Today, he's teaching our recruits to defend themselves against extreme violence, whether their attacker is armed or unarmed. He is threatening me with a gun. They only one, two, and then he disarmed. <laughs> and now, you see the position of mine is this. I am meaning now there is one, two, and if he moves, this is not the bullet. First, this is a buried inside. And then, it will be the bullet. You can actually do a lot of damage, even in just two, two actions, before you actually leave. So it's, it's pretty good. It's very different than I've ever done anyway. Very, very different. Point to go out there. The last 10 hours have taught the recruits how to react without hesitation and respond with the appropriate attack. 45-year-old Steve Hart is a black belt martial arts instructor, but this is unlike anything he's ever done before. Basically, not the crack out of the person before they hit you, which is, you know, which I think always helps, doesn't it? first secret agents to have self-defense incorporated into their training were the men and women of the Special Operations Executive, World War II's legendary SOE. Theirs was a totally new approach to spying, and they effectively wrote the rule book on how modern agents are trained. The classical way of spying, as it were, would not have worked, because it was too gentlemanly. There was nothing gentlemanly about SOE. It was a kill or be killed. The men and women of the SOE were a new breed of spy, much feared. One that could strike the enemy any time, anywhere. We were all ruthless, you know. We were desperate characters. If the Germans had come to me, I'd have shot as many dead as I could. At training camps stretching the length and breadth of the country, secret agents like Rafe Buclair were taught how to survive behind enemy lines. 
They learned how to use weapons, about explosives and demolitions, and about sabotage. I had to learn how to make homemade bombs using stuff that you could buy in the chemist shop, but you had to weigh everything. It had to be exact. It would take you about five hours to make it, and it would blow up in about five seconds. We were told how to fire revolvers from the hip, you know, instinctive, quick action. And we went through the woods, and the targets would drop from the trees, you know, they, they, they had it all arranged, and we had to... We had to fire in any direction. They did all terrible things like crawling under barbed wire and the pouring rain and being dumped in the middle of a Scottish moor and told to find their own way back and eat berries on the way. And uh, it was a tough training. The rough and dangerous SOE training was devised to give secret agents the best chance of survival behind enemy lines, much of which is still taught by today's major espionage agencies. Over the next 24 hours, our recruits will have a crash course in some of these skills. They'll need them. For before long, they'll be dropped into enemy territory. Deployed to destroy a chemical installation. Then, they'll have to escape and evade capture. And when it's all over, four of them will be gone from the course. made by Hector and Cock, effective from zero to 400 metres. To make sure that there's not... The a recruits are being taught weapons handling skills by spy trainers Rillian Bridge, expert in paramilitary operations, and Josie Walker, specialist in counter-terrorism. This has been part of all agents' training since the days of the SOE. This is the best combat handgun in the world. Like, it's the weapon of the special forces. I'm going to strip it now. So the first thing I do... This is the first part of weapons training, learning the safety drills. After three hours, the recruits are ready to move on to a field exercise. They'll be using BB guns with pellets, but the principles of safety will be the same. This is a contact drill, a set procedure to escape enemy fire. In its demonstration, spy trainers Terry Wigglesford and Josie Walker, as driver and passenger, must retreat from enemy fire, using any protection available to lay down covering fire for their partner. This is a standard contact drill, taught to all agents. First up are Liam and Susan. They're about to find out that when the bullets fly, it all becomes a lot harder than it looks. Behind cover, Susan forgets her signal to Liam. Well, I'm trying to move. And Liam heads for the wrong piece of cover. What was that standing bit? You wasn't using the car, you were standing up. Yes, sir. Liam, use your brain. Don't let the red mist cloud your judgment. I know it's just an exercise and it's it's in a friendly environment, but they're really hyped up for this and the adrenaline's pumping and they do forget the simplest things because they're, asked, they're so wound up. This is the 
surprise training where the recruits have come under fire and encountered the enemy. It's been a tough exercise, but tougher lies ahead. A mission behind enemy lines that requires one last skill. Back at the spy school, Barry Davies is teaching them the principles of close target reconnaissance, or CTR. Okay. What I want you to do now, I want you to just walk around the house and make a note of your way, if you were looking at this building, your way you think you go in. Assume the doors and windows are locked. How you would approach getting into this building, okay? Part of tomorrow's mission will include a CTR on an installation behind enemy lines, which they will help to destroy. So they have to know what to look for. Even though the school isn't the target, it's an ideal training ground. This side looks fairly, fairly innocent when you look at it first, but there's a light in that corner which has to go off somehow. So just trying to find the sensor really for it. There you go. You get on the roof and take those slats out. Those slats will slide straight back into the building. You see one's already falling out. Straight up the pitch there onto the cable. Come along the roof. Yeah, job's good. I've lived in houses with better security than this. This man is inside the house as well, you know, there are old houses so uh, they built in different ways, so even drain system might have some exits or holes somewhere, you know. The recruits now know what to look for, but on the ground they could never walk right up to a target. Stage two is to find an OP or observation point. The first thing we're looking for is a place we can basically cache ourselves and hide ourselves. Put any heavy equipment down while we have a quick look around the place. Look at the first immediate problems, dogs and guards, etc. What we're looking for is cover. So we're going to look around here now and look for what you would consider to be an ideal OP area. So you can go in there and hide all your light, but you can't get out there. There's no way that you can even do a quick recce out onto the ground. You need to be over here. This isn't the cover, it's not split the following. Yeah, but you could make cover. Mm -hmm. Bring your bush with you. Yeah, I think that would be an ideal area. Yeah. You can get right close. It's dense. And you've got a quick escape. You're not bad. Have you found places? Yeah, yeah. lots of places found here. But the, the best one is where? Right here. Yeah, here. And which side of it? This side. That side. No, that side. Okay? I need to see two aspects of the house if I can. Why look at one when you can look at two? And therefore I would move that side of the cover. Okay? At 8pm it's an early night for the recruits, but they'll need all the sleep they can get because tomorrow holds their greatest test so far, at the end of which four of them will be removed from the course. They'll be given a mission to find and help destroy a heavily guarded enemy installation, then make their way across enemy territory to a safe house. This is a mission to replicate the activities of spies working behind enemy lines. At 10 a.m. on day five, the recruits are briefed for their mission behind enemy lines. You're doing a CTR on a chemical plant for demolition by an SF team. Acting on information received from an A1 intelligence source, the chemical plant is known to have been converted to produce chemicals for use in WMD, which are weapons of mass destruction, by a local terrorist group. A directive has been issued for special forces to destroy this site with a prior recce by undercover operatives. Your mission is to CTR, close target recce, the chemical plant at grid 221-332. Finally, synchronizing watches. The recruits have half an hour to get their kit together. They know they're about to be dropped into enemy territory. They know the ground is patrolled by enemy agents. And they know that they must avoid capture at all costs. They're being taken miles away from the security of the spy school to a terrain completely unknown to them. It'll be dawn before they see the school again. To perform the CTR phase of their mission in the time available, the recruits split into three groups. This allows them to approach the target from different angles. Each must find vantage points from which to identify access to the installation, as well as note all security in and around the building, and then report back. 
They have exactly half an hour to complete this. Group one make it to the woods on the north face of the plant. In this group are Robin, Steve Feezy, Julie, and Alistair. Alistair and Steve guard the rear, while Robin and Julie move forward to find an OP. From the edge of the trees, they'll have a good view of the plant, but it's a position which could leave them exposed. If they're spotted by security just once, it will all be over. Two sets of twin lake, security lake, the Taking up position on the east face of the target is group two. Jonathan is leading Susan, Steve Hart, and Liam. But they're not working well together as a team. With time short, that could prove disastrous. We're just trying to get some cover. Some last minute details from the same. Timing on this is tight. 21.30 is the deadline. Just 23 minutes away. Slav, Gary, Barry and Polly make up group three. And they're working their way in from the west. Using a cops as cover, Polly and Barry guard the rear, while Gary and Slav move forward to make sketches of the plant. Spy trainer Rillian Bridge is monitoring their progress. If you look behind the lane, you can just see the target, which is only about uh, just over 100 meters away from us. They're doing a great good job. We'll just crawled up through the long grass. Um, not a bad position to get a good observation of this aspect of the target, so they're doing well. At the moment, it's 2108, and they've got to be back at their rendezvous at 2130. So they've got a big issue between achieving the mission. Firstly, they've got to get the information, but secondly, they've got to get to their rendezvous in 20 minutes to pass the information on. So that's going to make some quite, quite uh, interesting decisions. I think we'll see some people sprinting fairly shortly. The shorter time gets, the more tired they become, and they have to take more risks to make it back in time. But one wrong move, spotted just once, and the mission is over for all three groups. In the next few hours, our recruits will discover how brutally true to life the training is. The spying game is about to get deadly serious. Can I die walking this hard to do them? Before you want to close the door again, come back. Okay. 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 All three groups make the rendezvous with just minutes to spare. But there's no rest. They must hand over the information straight away. Both to the south and west of the building, approximately 10 metres high, a security twin set halogen rating pointing at the unit and out from the unit. On the northwestern side, there's periodic tanks and metal scree, and it ranges all the way back to an aircraft carrier fuselage, which is burnt out and rusted. This will provide excellent cover to get in reasonably close without being seen. What was the interval between the patrol and car? It was the same, but the, the, the car was approximately 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, probably a whole circuit maybe took that very slowly, just stopping the while up. Acting on the intelligence gathered, the Special Forces team will move in to destroy the enemy installation, while the recruits watch for security patrols. The Special Forces team comprises the spy trainers. Moving in to demolish the target, they can ascertain if the intelligence gathered by the recruits is accurate. It was, it was, uh, it was hard work due to the lack of time, really. We had to limit ourselves to a couple of minutes of recon from different angles. Longer orbs would have given us better maps than the point. Time to get back here. 21, 27, we're right on the near with the team. If any of the information passed on is wrong, if the teams have failed to report on all aspects of access and security, they will have compromised the mission. And it could be all over before it's begun.
The installation has been destroyed, but the exercise is far from over. To complete this part of the mission, the recruits will have to escape the immediate area and find their way across enemy territory to reach a safe house. The exact coordinates to which have been left at a dead letter drop, a pre-designated collection point. But the spy trainers have classed the whole area enemy territory and are hunting the recruits down. To negotiate their way across this hostile environment, the recruits have kept to their CTR groups. Group 1, led by Alistair, are first to set off. We've got to complete the exercise by uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, and it's now quarter past 11, so we've got uh, two and three quarter hours, and we've already achieved that. The route to the dead letter drop is along two kilometres of country lanes, but they immediately leave the road to consult their map. We're not particularly keen about walking down the roads, to be fair. I don't want to be in that kind of open, open land. Um, so we're assessing whether we can, we can possibly go cross-country to, uh, to the next RV. Okay, we have choices, people. I say we tap back on the road. Come in the next one. This one here, yeah. Follow it. And it literally leads us right up. It's 10 Yeah. Yeah. Right, let's get going. They opt for a roundabout route. This will add an extra two kilometers to their journey, but they hope it'll be safer. Group two, still operating under Jonathan's leadership, are finding it difficult to work as a cohesive team. There was no control at the start of the mission. I was a little bit frustrated with the team leader at the time because there wasn't sufficient instructions given. So now we're very organized, we've gone through everything. We've got contingency plans in place. We're just gonna work tighter faster and smarter. We think we know what the enemy as such is planning and uh, under them circumstances we're going to make sure that A, we complete the mission and B, we don't get caught. I'll be leading this team through this exercise and uh, yeah, I think we're going to give it our best shot. We're going to go down the road, divide to the fork and get those just at the bottom of the hill. At 11.30, Group 3 set off following Gary. They follow the roads but keep an ear out for any cars that may contain enemy agents. chosen the most direct route and are the first to reach the dead letter drop. They find the instructions to reach the safe house slip behind a metal sign on a gate post. Written on the note are the map coordinates to the safe house, two kilometers away. This is heavily patrolled enemy territory. So using a torch, however small, will compromise them. I can see it for a just get in. Okay, I'll be in charge of Side, hold together, get the pillowcase on. 
three are captured. Gary, Polly, Slav and Barry will now be held in a cell, forced to adopt stress positions and tormented by white noise. They will have to withstand all this for three hours before being interrogated. It's uh, going to be quite a long night, but uh, it's something I really need to do. It's uh, interrogation is, is uh, what they're going to get if they get caught as agents in a foreign country. They'll be treated far worse than what they're treated here. Uh, when I like to them up, or I just sort of see what we can get. With 15 minutes to go, Group 1 finally reached the safe house. They are now safe from interrogation and expulsion. We didn't go anywhere near any of the routes that, that, that we thought that they would uh, expect us to go down, so uh, I don't know whether any of the other teams were compromised or not. So, well, even if they're in? Yeah. Uh, but we seem to be the only ones here at the moment. It's now 2 a.m. Time has run out for Group 2, who are still on the ground. What's happened? I'm going Nowhere near the safe house, lost, tired and disgruntled, they never stood a chance. They too will be treated as captive and face interrogation. Should recruits face a long night ahead. All must hold to their cover story. No one wants to break. Before dawn, four of them will be out. friends we're going we were going to a, a guides and scouts training thing we were orienting i don't believe your story for one minute you need to wise up and start thinking about things you've been treated well so far haven't you i've been treated okay things can get much worse trust me much much worse i told you i do not believe that story you need to start that was the truth. Right, unpleasant. Take her away. I want you to tell me why you're here first and what you were doing. Well, I was hiking. confused as to why I'm here and why I've been treating you in this manner. No explanations, nothing. Just thrown to the ground, treated roughly, no explanation, couldn't speak, wasn't allowed to do anything, put in the back of a van, no explanations. Right, okay. What am I to assume from that? Suddenly I'm here and I'm talking to you and it's not in a friendly manner, nobody's identified themselves and I've been treated very poorly. Susan's approach wasn't very good at all. Just kind of arguing and interrogate her. Best just say nothing at all. In reality, uh, like that, they just get uh, jumped on from a great height and uh, finish up with broken bones and um, they would soon calm down. Really disappointed, really annoyed. I should have stopped here when I realised it was all going wrong. One person seemed to have control and the right decisions weren't made. Ultimately, the final decision really left to me and I made a decision and basically the responsibility for getting lost was up to me. 
and I got everyone else in the forest really. We got down to the um, dead letter box. Our so called leader elected that he stayed at a safe point with uh, one of the other members of our team. So you two are going to go to the dead letter box? So they sort of dug in, as it were. Me and uh, Susan went off to retrieve the, the note, went back, and um, Slippery Sam had disappeared. So we walked up and down three or four times. We had a little call signal between us. Nothing. So now we're thinking, well, what do we do? We're buggered now. Uh, I think... Myself and Jonathan were spending a little too much energy on concealing ourselves. We heard several times people literally marching down the street, and we thought, ooh, and then it's, uh, they're, they're the bad guys. That wasted a lot of time, and we eventually did manage to get hold of them, but by then we were more than halfway through the time that was allocated. So from there on, we still had gun hose and bloody lead us because he was the only one that had the map. Now, where, where are you? Have you, have you found a group of No, this is one of six, yeah. So he read the map right this way. So we cleared down some alleyway, down some lane. It was totally the wrong one. I knew it was wrong. Oh, I felt it was wrong. I said, this isn't right. No, no, I know where I'm going. Suddenly we had to dive for cover because we heard sounds coming from our right. After about five minutes, we figured out that they were sheep. <laughs> then he said, well... I don't know where we are. I'm absolutely gutted and disappointed. I um, feel I've met the staff as a team. We didn't we didn't work well together and we failed as a team. It couldn't have gone more wrong for us if we tried. Uh, I really do seriously think it's affected my chances now. So, not very happy about here, I'm afraid. Whatever shortcomings I have will be evaluated and uh, I hope that I'm doing better than everyone else. But you know, the proof is in the pudding. So we'll wait and see what the evaluators say at the end. It's now 5 a.m. and the recruits have been up for about 24 hours. The night exercise was a crucial phase in their training and not everyone made it through. The interrogation proved too much for Liam Baines and Slav Stepanov and the spy trainers removed them from the course. Group one. Alistair, Robin, Steve and Julie made it to the safe house. Their places in the next stage of the training are now assured. The others were not so lucky. Of the six captured recruits, two more must go. Since all six failed the night exercise, the spy trainers will decide who leaves based on their performance over the course of the past five days. I knew that from the beginning. Um, so getting this far is, mm. you know, is an achievement. And I'm happy to invite you to the next phase. Thank you. Well, uh, Thank you. Although you've tried very hard, you have to understand that the competition uh, the rest of the recruits is very high. Yeah. Um, I feel a bit embarrassed about some of the things I've done, but I feel like I've done my best effort at all times. Embarrassed by what? Well, you know, just thinking now at last night on the uh, navigating with the grid reference. Well done. We're pleased to invite you to the next phase of the course. Okay? Thanks, Jeff. That's not the answer I was expecting. Thank Staff. you very much, Staff. Actually, we were a little, little bit disappointed with you because after the selection weekend, we thought that you were going to do very well. Are you inviting me now? We're inviting you now. I'd love to accept. Thank you very much. Okay. Despite failing the night operation, the spy trainers felt Jonathan's performance overall merited him staying on the course. Now, they are eight. They're happy now, but from here on in, the competition to stay in the course will get even tougher. Only four can make the final team.